Today we'll be giving a gameplay overview and review of Francis Drake. We're gonna get all piratey. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode with Sedai 4 Games. I'm Tracy, the Game Maven. And I'm Stefan, the Games Teacher. Are you looking to see what the components look like? Want to see what we think of the game? Well, click on the timestamp below. If you like what you see, leave us a comment to let us know how we're doing, and subscribe to the channel to be notified when we post new content. And with that, we're going to voyage on and play Francis Drake. In Francis Drake, you'll be gathering resources, hiring crew, provisioning your ship with cannons, and sailing the high seas of the Caribbean in search of conquest and plunder. At the end of three eras, the player with the most points wins the game. All right, so the components here for Francis Drake, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. First, we have our game board. Then we have our Har Plymouth Harbor chart. We have our player mats. We have our banners, which are our location tiles, and they're actually different location tiles based on number of players. Then we have our Sp Spanish galleon counters, our Spanish frigate counters, and our Spanish troop counters. Then we have all of our commodity tiles, our voyage marker, and a die. Then some wonderful player, player uh, pieces here. We've got our galleons in the different colors. Then we have our frigates, our scoring markers, and our player discs. We also have a governor, an admiral, and an informer tile. We have our cool treasure chest, which we get to hide all of our wonderful gold, jewels, and silver in. We have our barrels that represent our supplies. Then we have a various cubes, and they represent, in the three colors, the gray is our crew, the black is our guns, and the purple is our trade goods. So we have our pinnace counters as well. Each person gets an investor tile. Each player will get discs labeled one through four, a ghost ship, as well as a golden hind. They'll get player discs and player cubes. So first we're gonna do setup of the Plymouth Harbor board. So this is where all the supplies are gonna go for all the players to be able to easily access. It's also very clearly labeled. So you're gonna have your crew over here, your guns, and you're gonna have your barrels for your supplies, your, your jewels, gold and silver, as well as commodity tiles, trade goods, your informer, your governor and admiral tokens, as well as all these wonderful special counters you're gonna use throughout the game for the Spanish troops, their frigates and the pinnace counters. All right, so setup for the main game board is as follows. The Spanish galley encounter is gonna be shuffled and placed out randomly face down. No one gets to look at what they say on the bottom. Then on the various spots that have these little um, icons here, you're gonna place out the silver, gold, and jewel tokens accordingly. Each player will place one of their counters on the various three spots in the conquest board. We're also going to put out commodity tokens on the various spots designated as per the icon. The voyage marker is gonna go in the first spot on the left-hand side of the voyage track. Off the screen, we're also gonna be playing into the Plymouth Harbor, our frigates, and on the score track, we're gonna place our marker on space number four. So as mentioned, there here are your frigates that will start in the player spots. They are randomly determined. And then the scoring markers will be placed on the number four spot on the scoring track. Each player will receive their player mat as well as the fourth cube. And we'll show what that is in the second phase of gameplay. Then you get all of your discs numbered one through four, your golden hind and ghost ships. You'll get all of your markers that will be used during the provisions phase as well as your galleon. Okay, so for the first, uh, there's two phases to the gameplay. The first phase is called the provisions phase. This is gonna involve you moving along the dock side, and it is a one way, as you can see with this arrow, so you can only ever move forward. You can never move back. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna take one of your player discs, and you have quite a few here, and you can use as little or as many as you want, and you're gonna place on one of the available spots. Let's say I wanted guns, for example. I could place here, and I would get two guns, which I would then play onto my player board in the gun spot. This means that I will no longer be able to take either the shipyard or the crew that are behind that action space. So I'll only ever be able to get those uh, supplies through actions that are ahead of me. Then in turn order, each player will play one and they'll play out another. So let's say Red wanted to really guarantee that they got some supplies, they would probably want to go in the leftmost spot. It gives you the most. And then there are only two more spots available for other players to take. 
There are a couple of special spots that give you stuff in addition to the regular provisions and supplies. We have our queen, which is going to allow you to take uh, guns and trade goods, as well as trade in your frigate for your galleon, which is a little bit more powerful. The admiral is going to allow you to take the admiral token from the board, or from the Plymouth Harbor board, and bring it to your area. And what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to uh, look at the counters going out on the Spanish frigates before they're placed out, so you'll kind of have a bit of information before you get there. As well, you're going to get a gold in your supply. Then we have some standard supply spots again. A governor here, the governor is uh, similar to the admiral, except what he does is he allows you to look at the Spanish troop counters when they go out. So you'll be able to determine where they're going to go, and he'll get a silver as well. He's going to get to take first spot in the harbor when they sail out. So they'll get to basically jump the line and be able to take first spot to be able to sail out. Again, we have some more spaces for uh, special um, supplies. The informer here, is going to allow you to uh, possibly move your token throughout the game, which we'll kind of explain in the sailing phase, but you'll take the informer marker and you'll get a trade good and then you'll be able to take the action of maybe moving your marker or moving, uh, switching them around. Then once you get to this spot here, this will be the last spot on the player board. You can take one of any supplies. You can either take a supply, a gun, or a crew member, and then you're gonna place here and you're going to bring your, so let's say red got here first and red was the first to make it there, they would actually place their ship on the first spot. So they'll get to sail out in the second phase first in order. So not necessarily the player order here is going to be the player order for the second phase. So in the second phase of the game, players are going to take their frigates or their galleons if they collected those, and they're going to travel out into the sea, discovering things, fighting things. What they're going to do is based on number of barrels that they have, they can then travel that many regions out. There are markers here, one, two, three, and four. So if you had four supply barrels, you could go to four. But if you only had three, you could only go as far as three. So we would put yellow and red, and orange could go all the way out to four. Then each player is going to take all of their markers. Now, normally you'd only get one through four of the discs. You may collect your Golden Hind or the Ghost Ship based on actions you took earlier in the, the docks, but normally those would just get put to the side. Then these will all get turned face down in your player area, and in player order, players will get to play out one at a time. They do not have to be played in numbered order because you don't want people to know which number you're putting out where. So once all players have placed their discs out, they will turn them over and they will play them in order from one being on the um, top end down to four. If there is a tie for the number, then it will be based on player order in the harbor. So first player will get to be on the top, second player, and so on and so forth. Then each player is going to move their ship to their number one. And then they're going to resolve them in player order accordingly. Then the ship would move on to number two, number three, and number four, till all the discs have been resolved. We're just going to resolve yellow's plays for this turn. So here, this is where you would collect commodity tokens. Now you need trade good cubes in order to be able to do so. So you would cash in a trade good cube to be able to collect whatever remaining commodities are still available. So yellow would take an indigo and they would put it on their player mat because they are worth points at the end of the game for sets. Then yellow would move on to number two, and they would resolve here. So this is a fort. When they resolve a fort, they're going to turn over. Now these are randomly played out unless a person has taken the appropriate character that allows them to place these out where they would like. We will turn it over, and it will tell us how many crew members we need to have to beat these Spanish troops, plus it will have guns, and it will show how many guns we need. If we have the pinnace counter, it will allow us to not also need any guns, because we're basically sneaking in, in the back door. But if we don't have that pinnace counter, we will have to pay out crew and guns. In this case, there is no crew, but there are two guns. So I would have to pay out two gun cubes to be able to collect the points. As well, if I'm the first player there, I would get, in this case, the silver, and then we get to go in my handy dandy little treasure chest, hidden till the end of the game. Moving up here to the Spanish Galleon, I must have my Galleon counter. So I must have collected my Galleon on the docks in order to be able to fight the Spanish Galleon. 
If I do have it, then I can fight him. I will get the victor points on the top if I have the same number or more, or the same number actually, of guns. So in this case, it's three plus one. As you can see, I do not have enough. So I wouldn't have successfully defeated it. It doesn't do any harm to me, but I basically have lost that action. Finally, if I travel down here to the town, towns only have troops, so I just need to have a crew member to basically fight that troop. So I would spend a crew member. I would get the victory points, and again, if I'm the, old, the first one there, I would get to collect the jewel, gold, or in this case, silver. For each conquest I do, I can fight, if I defeat a town, a fort, or a Spanish galleon, I will move my cube into that spot. So in this case, I successfully defeated a town and a fort, but I did not successfully defeat the galleon. At the end of the round, players receive one, four, or ten victory points, depending upon how many of their cubes they manage to bring down there. So the game will end when there have been three voyages and everyone has resolved all of their discs. Then the players will have their score based on any scores they created from defeating galleons, troops, or conquering towns. People are, players are also going to receive points for sets of commodities they get. So different sets, you need to have different types. So if you only had one, you would get one point, or sorry, two points, eight, 16, and 26 if you had four different ones. You can collect multiple different sets. They just have to be different types in each set. Players will also receive points for any silver, gold, and jewels that they collected in their treasure chest. So now you would, re re um, you would show what you have in your treasure chest. And in this case, I would get six points, another four points, and another five points for all the various treasure I collected in my chest. The person with the most points wins. And now we're ready to give our review of Francis Drake. So, Delphine, what do you think? I really like this game. Um, the component quality is fantastic. The uh, gameplay is intuitive. It's not, uh, you know, there's a number of actions to take, but it's not too difficult to, to figure out once you uh, get through the rules. So. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's a good game. It didn't wow me and it wouldn't displace anything else in my collection. And I'll kind of explain why as, as we kind of go along. But I agree. It's a good game. Not fantastic game for me. So, so let's go with the art and theme. Anything piratey is a big win for me. I'm yes. a big fan of the pirate theme. I play a lot of pirate games, and this was uh, this was good for me. I, I really enjoyed it. I actually I do like this game for the theme. I'm not usually into pirate themes, and there's only a couple of pirate games that I've actually enjoyed because Francis Drake wasn't technically a pirate. It kind of has a bit of a piratey feel, but not like super like piratey. Potato, potato. And the thing is, you're not going after each other. So a lot of pirate games are more of a take that. So if people don't like a take that game, this game has that pirate theme without the being, you know, a, a, a vicious to one another. Like there's obviously a little bit of displacement in the actions and taking spots along the pier that can affect other players, but it's not an absolute attack your other players, which is normally happens in a pirate game. So... Components. What do you think of the components? Uh, the game comes with really nice uh, plastic miniature ships. Uh, they look really good. Uh, it'd be great to see those painted sometime, maybe. maybe <laughs> I still have lots of Ancient of Madness to paint, so we'll see. <laughs> um, and no, the overall the component quality is great. So I, I really, I really enjoyed that. I agree. This is where this game really shines. This is probably the my most favorite part of the game. Components and components really draw me in. And like you said, the plastic ships, the all the various uh, detail components for the commodities. Um, now, of course, the crew and the guns and stuff were just cubes, but you know it still worked worked well. And the uh, the board was very thick. I love the treasure chest the, where you hide, like instead of having a shield to hide your things, which is where you hide all of, the glass beads. You hide all the beads, the gold, the silver, jewels. The jewels, exactly. Yeah. So that definitely big big thing for me. So game mechanics. For me, the game mechanics were, were good. I liked the pier aspect where you, it's a one way, so you have to like make sure if you go in a spot that's too far in advance that you can't catch anything, you can't like collect anything behind it, so you have to be careful and balance that out. Plus, other players might get to where you really want to be first. You have to decide do you want to do that or not. I also like that you have one, that's the first phase, and then the second phase is going out and um, attacking towns and forts and other uh, the Spanish uh, frigates and galleons and stuff collecting commodities through the island so that part was probably um, 
it was a very solid game. Again, it was just that it it didn't have anything specifically unique for me. It was very good. It was solid, but I was kind of like looking for like what is this different that's that's compared to other things. And the pier was kind of cool, but there are a few games that do that that I kind of like just as much. So solid game, but. I like the action selection mechanism, the, the pier at the start of the game, where you have to decide, you know, if you're going to push forward further down the pier and give up some potential mm -hmm. actions behind you. Um, so for me, that was that was the interesting part of the game for me. Cool. So similar games. Now this is something we kind of struggled with because there are a lot of games that do worker resource you know going out and exploring so yeah um totally different theme one that just came to mind actually carson city where you have a number of actions oh, and you're yeah. going forward down the the list of action spaces and then you resolve your actions uh in that order you know when, when you get to the bottom part of the map so uh carson city for the for the kind of action taking mechanism that's true totally different theme though obviously different theme and i'm glad you thought of that one because that one's uh, i think that one just reprinted recently it's just come kind of back uh, into yeah last year the i think there was a reprint or something like it, that yeah. another one we had talked about was Kalis. now in the sense of when you're going down you ha you're going down a pathway so there's less of two phases but the one the gameplay is that if you go here that you can't go back so you have to like continue the game along plays the linear path. that way it plays very linear yeah like linearly exactly so i think that's a similar game mm -hmm. with some of the close mechanics so mm -hmm. overall uh, overall opinion of the game um, I enjoyed this game. I, I really enjoyed the theme, as I mentioned. The game component quality is uh, really through the roof. Like you, however, it didn't wow me. It was a good game. It was a solid game, but it didn't, you know, it didn't displace anything on my shelf, as you mentioned. So um, I'm going to give it one big thumbs up. Um, I don't know what it was about it that didn't wow me. I mean, I can't put my finger on it, unfortunately. I think, like I said, we're just so used to playing games that you're looking for something unique and new. And this is a game that is a couple years old, I believe. So, you know, obviously there's that. I do like, like I said, I feel like a kind of a pirate e theme and you don't want to take that, that's unique. But everything else about it is just similar to a lot of other worker placement expedition type games. So again, also a big uh, one thumb up because it's a good game. If you uh, don't have this style of game in your collection already, I would recommend it for those who, who definitely like the whole uh, exploration and resource uh, collection before ex exploring it. So, And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Follow us on social media.